everyone, I'm Jerry Shikuma, ACC's Home and Community-Based Programs Administrator. Welcome to our cooking demo today. I feel like it's been a long time since I've had the pleasure of being here with you and introducing our presenters and our instructors, so I'm so happy to be here today. Um, before we get started, I wanted to let you all know about some of the things that we have going on here at ACC in case you haven't had the chance to read our newsletter or come down to our, to our community center. We have lots of weekly fitness classes, everything from music and motion to Zumba Gold. And we also have a good range of classes that um, are sitting classes or chair-based classes um, or a little bit less movement oriented. So we have standing Pilates, we have gentle yoga, um, and we have ready steady balance. And so I really encourage all of you to take a look at the classes. Um, like I said, there's a whole range from, you know, dancing around to from Zumba Go to, to sitting seated exercises with our ready steady balance. And they're all really great for our health and fitness. So come and check it out if you haven't already. Um, I also wanted to let you know about our cooking demo that's going to be next week, Monday, with our very gr good friend, Mary Ellen Burns. It's the Almost No Cook Cooking Show. And Mary Ellen actually is here today in our audience, um, but she tells me it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a show that you can use your abundance of garden and pantry ingredients. Um, and she's going to have some guests here that are going to be learning how to cook as, as she presents it to you. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So tune in next week, August 2nd. Um, that's a Tuesday from 2 to 3 p.m. And then we also want to let you know about something that's coming up in the fall. As you all may know, this year is ACC's 50th anniversary. And so part of that celebration, um, we're going to be having ACC's first ever Ohana Walk. And that's a walkathon that's going to happen um, nearby here in the um, Pocket Greenhaven Canal Walk. It's a two and a half mile long walk and we'll have tables along the way where you can stop if you want and pick up some water and and see old friends and also learn about some of the resources that we have in the community. There will be lots of um, representatives from other uh, of our sister nonprofits that will be staffing those booths. Um, and if you register, you get a free t-shirt and you also get to enjoy some food and drink at a picnic that we're going to be having at the end of the walk here at ACC. Um, it sounds like a lot of fun. I think we're also planning to have some bingo there. And speaking of bingo, I want to encourage all of you to tune in. So all of you who are familiar with our history know that um, bingo is a, is a really big part of our history. We were able to open our care center thanks to all of the volunteers that helped us raise money through bingo. And we're bringing bingo back. So next week, Friday, August 5th, for the first time in a long time, we're going to have bingo. And you can come in person or you can play online as well. Um, there'll be prizes. There'll be just lots of fun and good times and, and sharing of stories from past um, you know, experiences and, mem and memories with all of our great volunteers. For bingo. So next week, Friday at 3 o'clock, um, if you want more information, if you want to sign up, um, then please visit our website at accsv.org backslash back back online. Okay? Um, and then now for today's show, I'm so excited. So we have a new presenter today, um, Chef Kelsey Nair who um, is a local chef and also a forager, which I found really interesting. So Kel help me welcome Kelsey, come on over. So, Kelsey, tell us a little bit about what does that mean to be a forager? Ah, uh, gosh, it combines my two favorite things, being in nature and eating. So wow. I feel like it's a perfect match. You get to spend the whole day outside and then at the end of the day, you get to take what you found and then make it into a beautiful meal. So what Ooh, more could you ask for? <laughs> not much more. That sounds great. And you were saying, you were sharing with me earlier 
that um, it's both on land and in sea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yes. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. So for sea foraging, I collect seaweed, mussels, and urchins when I can find them. Um, and luckily, we're here on the Californian coast where there's plenty of that for us. And for on land, I usually do mushroom foraging throughout the year. Ooh, sounds Much good. <laughs> Are you going to be using any of those ingredients today by chance? Unfortunately not. Today we're focusing on a recipe from the part of the world that I used to live in, in uh, cent um, the Caucasus. Uh -huh. And so we're using bread, cheese, and butter. Also amazing ingredients. Ooh, hard to go wrong <laughs> with those ingredients. Well, maybe we'll have to have you back another time to show us how to make something with ingredients that you've foraged. But for today's show, tell us a little bit about what we're going to be seeing. Yeah, so today we're going to be focusing on a tear and share from the country of Georgia. Yeah. It's essentially a huge cheese boat where you get to tear off the crust, dip in, and eat cheesy goodness. Ooh, so <laughs> That sounds great. Okay, I'm going to get out of your way so you can show us how to make, and tell us the name, Kachipari. Yeah, Hachapuri. Hachapuri, yeah, okay. Hachapuri. All right. Perfect. And Take it away. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. So for everyone, uh, hacho is uh, Georgian for cheese curds and puri is bread. So cheese curd, bread, or like cheesy bread. So I used to live in the Republic of Georgia after I went to university. I took a few years traveling and living in the post-Soviet space. And I found myself taking a contract to teach English in a village called um, Chumlaki in Kakheti, which is the wine region and to um, the east of the country. And so if we, I'm gonna pull over our map, or our globe over here. It's a little bit old, but that's okay. <laughs> Georgia, if you all don't know, is located right in the uh, southeastern corner of Europe. Oh, perfect. <laughs> and so Turkey's to our south, Russia's to our north. We have the Black Sea to the west, and to the east we have Azerbaijan and Armenia. It's really a bridge of Eastern and Western cultures, which makes the food phenomenal. So I figured we'd start with making the dough today. And what's really awesome about well, what I found, what was really nice about living in the village in Georgia is that when you wanted dairy products like um, milk or cream or mazione, which is the G Georgian word for yogurt, uh, you would go to the local milkmaid and she would have a cow in her garage, which is essentially a wooden building next to our house and you would get this mason jar full of yogurt or milk with a thick, thick column of cream. And so for their doughs, they do an enriched dough, which is an egg, flour, and some yogurt. So we're gonna start with some yogurt today. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just put it in our container. Since we're gonna use our hands, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my fingers. <laughs> We'll see how this goes. Perfect. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this is about one and a fourth cup of yogurt. We then have one fourth tablespoon of salt that we're going to add. And one fourth, or I'm sorry, one fourth teaspoon of baking powder. And same with the salt, one fourth teaspoon. We're also going to add the egg here. And I'm going to mix it together. <laughs> Maybe with uh, the cups of, I'll mix it all at once. So we're going to add three and a half cups of flour here. So that was one, two, three, I'm using a half cup, so we're gonna to count to seven, <laughs> four, five, six, 
six and seven. And I'm just gonna retain a little bit of this flower just in case if it's too much. And now we'll go in with our hands, lest I have messy hands dealing with a bag of flour. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a good combo. <laughs> So I first ran into Hachapuri because I would go teach all day um, at the school. And then I had to somehow feed myself. And so I would, after school, I would walk down to the main road with the children and find myself a taxi to the local town where I would stop at a cafe. Uh, there was one other English teacher from South Africa that would join me at the cafe and you'd walk into this hole-in-the-wall place it's very small uh, there was one woman running the cash register and making everything in the back um, and as you walked in you would see this huge pastry case of sodas and delicious cakes and kind of like in some parts of the world they would have a huge menu but in all honesty, they only made five things. And one of those things was hachapuri. And so we would share a slice of cake and some hachapuri and grade our papers each afternoon. So this is looking a little bit dry. I'm actually going to try to scrape out the rest of this yogurt here. And if we need, I can always add water. Which I think I might grab some here. Hold on just a second. <laughs> I'm gonna go grab some. And at least we want it to be sticky, but not too sticky. So we don't want it sticking to my fingers, but an elastic enough to where we can still use it as a dough later on. So I'm gonna dump, I'm gonna dump it. <laughs> and work with it from here. Cool. Just so that I can get both hands in it. Mm. Perfect. And so there are th many different kinds of hachapuri. Today we're learning about the Ajaroli hachapuri, which is from the western side of the country. Um, and there are th eight different types. There's many different regions of Georgia. The three that I enjoy the most are the Ajaroli Hachapuri, which is the boat shape full of cheese. Where I lived in Kakheti, they mostly had the Imeruli one, which is essentially a flattened dumpling that you pan fry. And if we're lucky enough today, we might have some time to make that. And then there is the one ah, that it's not my favorite. <laughs> it is very flaky and buttery and like a lasagna um, that is actually just a baked good. And that one is acha. It's called acha. And you can mostly find it here in the US at any like uh, Russian or Eastern European bakery, that's where you'll find that specific kind of hachapuri. Um, there's also other ones uh, from different regions like Osiatia, where uh, that's in the middle of the country, where you'll have cheese, potatoes, and sometimes they even have like boiled egg chopped up in the middle with the cheese. So it really just depends what region you're from as to which hachapuri you can get in the cafe and hachapuri is like Georgian fast food there's several different kinds of foods that you can get while you're headed to the metro or while you're at a bus stop and hachapuri is one of them because it's quick and delicious it's also uh, the imaruli kind which is like the flattened dumpling uh, is the one you'll find mostly at the metros. But the Ajoruli one is the one that you'll find at very fancy restaurants. And the kind that you'll find here at restaurants in the United States. 
<sighs> so finally, our dough is kind of coming together. Uh, we're at least getting it where it's getting some elasticity. As those of you at home that make their own dough, you know it's a workout. <laughs> I'm like sweating here with the lights. <laughs> um, but I think we'll get there pretty close. Another famous dish, um, kind of like what I was saying before with um, Georgian cuisine, it is East meets West. They have a dumpling called King Kali, which is a 16 pleated uh, dumpling that has mostly pork in it. And then it's kind of like a soup dumpling because you'll have the dumpling, you have to tip it open, over, just bite into it slightly, suck out all the juices, and then you can eat the dumpling, but you never eat the handle. <laughs> so that is another dish that you can get, usually at the Metro or a cafe. Phew. Golly goobers, I think we're close. <laughs> I'm gonna let this dough rest for a little bit. And while it rests, we're actually going to take a break and head on over to visit our friend Ryan Ota at Solomon's, which is on K Street. And over at Solomon's, they actually serve Ajaruli Hachapuri. We talk a little bit about his take on the dish, as well as his design for the menu. All right, let's go visit them. Solomon's since we're here. Yeah, so welcome. Um, first off, we draw a lot of inspiration from uh, from Russ Solomon. You can see a lot of the, the, the Tower Records uh, is coming through live and clear. Mm -hmm. uh, we're really big into the arts. Obviously, music is is one that we um, you know lean on quite a bit for inspiration. Inspiration in our menu, mm -hmm. um, inspiration in our decor, inspiration in, in how a lot of us you know work and carry ourselves. So um, it, it really it, it, it really uh, you know transfers through on, on all. Um, you know, we're here to talk about food, obviously, yep, yep, right? Exactly. So um, you know, <laughs> I always like to think of menu. yeah. I always like to think of our menu um, to reflect almost what a, what a Tower Records store would have mm -hmm. as far as like genres, you know, yeah. having classical, having new, new stuff, having um, various cultural, um, cultural genres and, and, and letting that, you know, play out in, in the flavors that we use. <laughs> so today we're really interested in learning more about why you added the hachapori to your menu. Yeah. So um, one of my favorite dishes, uh, I'm sorry, uh, one of my favorite times to eat are, is brunch. Mm -hmm. Brunch is, is um, I mean, it's, it goes back to the whole community gathering mm -hmm. place. You know, brunch is that setting, right? It's like you show up and, and it's with a group of friends. Sometimes it's with family. Sometimes it's with, you know, I mean, we've all had our nights where it's with the group of friends where it's like people are just crawling out of bed or some of our mm -hmm. friends don't make it the next morning yeah. out of bed. But, you know, we, we gather, for, gather for brunch and and uh, you know, I, I usually like to think of brunches um, uh, as really Sunday, Saturday night, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't get to go out Sunday night, so it, it's yeah. it's the last bit of Saturday night that we're grasping onto. Um, and, and you know, we can do it with our family, we can do it with our friends. So, um, Kachapuri was was uh, came came about on the menu because we really wanted to have an item that was familiar to 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 mm -hmm. folks, but was still new. Yep. Um, and, and we felt that that's what Catchbury is. Um, we, uh, you know, pizza, if you ask, you know, I, I would say in five Americans, I would say four out of four, I would say pizza would be in their top three mm -hmm. dishes, that their favorite things to eat. Yeah. So we wanted to, to use pizza um, to kind of coat tail off it and to introduce Catchbury. 
Um, Ketchapuri is, you know, I, as you know, um, with having your background, mm -hmm. is so similar with, with the crust essence, with the cheese essence. But the nice thing is, is we make it more breakfasty uh, with, the, with the addition of the egg. Yeah. Um, and, and I, for me, I've always been, um, I've always been kind of a, a tear and tear and cool pizza eater yeah. anyway. And, um, I've always been a pizza with, with my hands type mm -hmm. of person. And I think that's, that's another, um, you know, resonates with, with the cacciapuri, you know, to make that nice custard in the yes. middle and, and, uh, you know, and, and to be able to eat. It's a, it's a, sh it's a shareable dish. Mm -hmm. So I think it again, it's it's a it's perfect for the brunch element because yeah. when I sit down at a brunch table, usually I, I usually s sit down because I'm starving right off the bat, and then I want to <laughs> sit and talk. Yeah. So if that hits the table right off the bat, mm -hmm. we can all we can all play and yeah. and and we all enjoy it. And um, uh, what we've been able to do with the catch parade is we've been able to much like we've done here in America with pizza, where we've added all you know you name it as far as toppings. Mm -hmm. We've introduced a little bit more of that to the cachapuri, which, you know, cachapuri was usually more, more simplistic, more purist. Mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to, again, bring that California essence to it, um, you know, bring the more artistic side, bring a little bit more and give people, you know, the flavors that they want to eat. Um, with that, even introducing even a vegan version um, yeah. so that everyone, you know, again, everyone could play. Yeah, so, yeah, I guess that's my question. My next question is, how have you all customized it to fit like what customers are saying about the hot chipotle. Yeah, so, you know, being here in Sacramento, we're so lucky to have um, farms all around us. Mm -hmm. um, and I think um, even in the last few years, um, you know, it's great to see through the pandemic that all these farms have been able to make it or more have, have come in to fill the gaps. Um, Cause I, you know, it, it was a, t it was, a, there was a time when I was really worried about food and just the mm -hmm. production of food. But, you know, again, we're very, very fortunate here in Sacramento. Um, there's always farms that are wanting us to, you know, to, to, to contribute and to, to have their, uh, you know, have their items or, or you know, their, their bounty land on a cachapuri. Yeah. So we, we like to use that. Um, right now, um, asparagus just got, is just finishing up uh, for the springtime. Mm. Um, but we did a great asparagus bacon and some fingerling yeah. potatoes. So this was, that was just, you know, awesome. Um, and then furthermore, that's what we tend to use. We tend to use seasons to, to, to uh, you know, inspire us. That's great. Yeah. Well, I think I'm ready to try some of this hachapuri that you have. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, let's make a couple. Awesome, great. Yay. All right, yeah. I'm so excited. Let's see. Welcome. All right, Kelsey, here we are. Here's our uh, stretching area here. We have a nice quartz table, um, nice uh, dusted with flour here. Here's our eight ounce pizza cacciapurri dough. Awesome. Um, but obviously you can, you can use either. Uh, just make sure you have a nice uh, dusted surface. Um, one tip is to uh, the, the, the top side because it's already gonna have a skin from the air, mm -hmm. should go down. So we're gonna put that down, so that already gives you a little bit of a dry surface. Um, now we're gonna lightly dust it. What we wanna do is, in the early stages, we already wanna start forming our crust. So now you can see we have a little bit of crust. Now we also have an area for our hands to go in the middle. So now we're just gonna have a gentle pull. We, um, a lot of what I'm doing is I'm just opening my hands and I'll do it faster just so you can see it in regular time but all I'm really doing is with my thumb I'm pushing back to the center and with these I'm stretching it out so that you don't get that hole right that's in your I center so so yeah so that's <laughs> totally right <laughs> no. um, so we're about we're about there um, we're gonna have a little bit more time and, and uh, once we get cheese on it we'll be able to um, you know it's flexible we'll be able to manipulate a little bit more but we'll bring it over here mm -hmm. now the only reason why I'm bringing it onto a new surface is because I don't want a ton of flour on the bottom of this because once you go into the oven your flour is gonna burn so we right. um, you know we don't want to have that that we don't need that smoky essence in a cachapuri. Um, now we have a nice cheese blend. Um, here there are various ways of doing it. Um, we have found here at Solomon's that we do a mozzarella and feta blend. Yes. Um, it gives that nice tart sharpness to it, but then we have the nice string and pull of, of a mozzarella. 
That is um, very similar to what I suggest as well. <laughs> excellent, excellent. There we go. And as we can see, this, this dough is great. We already have all these little air bubbles all around and that's what we did by pushing it all on the outside. So now we're about there on our sides. The nice thing about having cheese on it is very similar to when you're cooking a pie crust and you put beans down at the bottom, it's gonna hold your, it's gonna hold your place now. So now I can even kind of pull this and manipulate this a little bit more. So now we're gonna make it actually look like a catch purry instead of a pizza. Awesome. Um, my way uh, of doing this, um, which I've never been actually trained on in this, this but, I, but I've you know, obviously adapted my own way. The way I like to do it is I like to pull out from both sides. Again, your dough is gonna have nice flexibility and then you're gonna twist opposite. So this way I'm gonna be twisting up, this way I'm gonna be twisting down. So I'm gonna bring this around just like this. And then I like a little pull. Yep. And then that's basically where I'm at. Now, these look a little sad right now, but the nice thing is, is, is this is dough. So yeah. it's, as, as it gets in the oven, it's gonna blow up and it's gonna expand a little and bit more. And those are like the best parts Exactly, of right? That's the, full, <laughs> yeah. that's the end of the French bread that you can't wait to get home and you rip it off and you yes. eat it on the way home. <laughs> exactly. So def All right. All right, I'll we get run, out of your way. Yeah, definitely. So we run our, our ovens at about 600 degrees. Um, it can easily be done at home at a, at a lesser. Um, the thing is, is we work in a restaurant here and we like fast. Yep. So, um, and, and an, another side of it is, is pizza dough does like a, a nice hot temperature. So usually as hot as you can get it at home, but um, that's, that, that's how we do it here, so. Great. Nice floured surface, so it came off nice and easy. And we'll go in, yeah, right? Um, so meanwhile, we are going to get our yolk ready. Um, so um, what you want to do is you want to separate the, the yolk from the white. And I like to use my hands here, pull away. Um, and now we're going to leave that reserved for ourselves. All yeah. right, we're going to take a peek at this. Okay. Excellent, we're right where we should be. And now we're just gonna give this a quick little rotation here. But as we can see, dough's getting nice color. We're getting all crisped up. We're gonna let this go for close to a minute. So, yeah. All right, now we're gonna warm this yolk. Like to put a little dent there. And then we're gonna go in just to temper it nicely, take the cool off it. And our oh. cachapuri is about ready. I know. You're ready? Yeah, I'm <laughs> so ready. <laughs> Excited to taste it. So what is the, do you guys use cashew cheese then for the vegan? So we, we have various ones. We have done, so we make a house renata, oh. which is a cashew, yeah, it's cashew tofu. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've done a variation with that right now our current variation because tomatoes are so good mm -hmm. and that's what you want you want to see that little jiggle, that jiggle. little jiggle in the middle so there we <laughs> are right there Perfect. Cool. well kelsey if, if it were just me i would be ripping this off and i would be you yeah, know okay. mixing it all up mm -hmm. but you know we're gonna we're gonna do it the right way we've learned some things over the last few years so yeah. what i'm gonna do here is I'm almost making like a custard mm -hmm. um, with the cheese, with the yolk. And you wanna do this right when it comes out of the oven so that yeah. you have a better chance to, to, to you know, be able to spread this, this really, really well. Now, once we get this all out, let's stick into this thing. Yeah. So we can just go ahead and Grab the side. The best spot, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> there it is. No. That was a good cheese bowl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm, it's How's so it? good. Excellent, so right? Good. <laughs> Yummy. I think I'm going to go for Thank you so much to Ryan and his team at Solomon's for showing us how it's done in a kitchen um, at a restaurant. But today we'll show you how to do it in your own kitchen at home. So like I said, we had our resting dough. Uh, we've, I've, through the 
magic of TV, we've let it rest for 30 minutes. <laughs> um, and so we're going to prep our pan and our oven and then our cheese and then put it all together. So first off, let's turn our ovens to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're going to prep our pan. I usually use parchment, but today I have aluminum foil. <laughs> and a trick that I always do is I kind of mark out the edges and then I just fold it. I never try to bother cutting it because why would I do that to myself when I struggle cutting straight lines? <laughs> And so then I'm going to go ahead and spray it. I have olive oil here today, just an olive oil spray, but you can also use baker spray um, as an option that has an oil and flour just to help uh, the bread not stick. So we've got our pan ready. I think we're good there. Let's move over to our cheeses. So just like Ryan mentioned in the clip, he uses feta and mozzarella. I also do the same. <laughs> and I am very passionate about these cheeses <laughs> because uh, we can't actually get the real cheese that they use in Georgia. It's called suguni. It uh, has the same holes and texture as we would find here in feta. It also has the same um, kind of saltiness. It's also uh, made in a brine but with solguni it's very funky so this is a normal feta that i've kind of just like let sit until the brine turned yellow <laughs> and that's maybe something you wouldn't normally let happen but i promise you it is the same flavor as you would get with solguni you are looking for that funkiness so that's where the most of the flavor is going to come for for us today and then we have just like ryan was saying with mozzarella will have the stringiness of the mozzarella. So combining them together creates this amazing, almost suguni-like cheese. So we're first going to break apart our feta. I'm using a fork sometimes, most of the times I use my hands, <laughs> but since I'm around humans today, we'll use a fork. <laughs> so we're just making sure it's into smaller bits before we mix it with the mozzarella. And I do do this part by hand. We're just going to combine it. And sometimes if you find that this gets dry, this cheese mixture, I have found that some people do use an egg to make it a little bit more moist. You could also use the brine. So we're just gonna go in and just make sure that every little bit has some cheese of both feta and mozzarella. And see here, we can kind of see that it's getting clumpy on its own, which is great. <laughs> It'll make it easier to use when we have our boat ready. Perfect. And I actually, I don't know if we've done this before, if we've had audience members, but like, <laughs> I would like you guys to smell the cheese because it doesn't smell like your typical sheep's cheese or your typical feta. It, it has like this real funkiness to it. Um, and it is a sheep based feta. So <laughs> that's kind of the smell we're going for. So it looks like it's pretty well combined. This is enough for two or maybe three, depending on how much cheese you want. So I'm gonna move this off to the side, wash my hands before we get back to the dough. Excellent. And the dough that I have set aside here is for two. And it's similar size to what we had earlier. So I'm just gonna go ahead, kinda of get some of the air out of it. Now you could say like, oh Kelsey, that looked hard with the dough. And yes, it was. <laughs> so much happened behind the scenes. Um, and you're like, dude, I don't want to do that. Totally fine. You can go to the grocery store and buy yourself some pizza dough and it'll work the same. So like Ryan had, um, 
he was pushing out from the center. What I'm trying to do is just get an oval. And I am a home baker, so I'm kind of stretching <laughs> and rolling to kind of get the shape. Um, he had that nifty technique of um, using your fingers out from the center. You can also do that. Uh, I traditionally, this is quite elevated today, I have a rolling pin. Normally, since I was living abroad, believe it or not, a rolling pin did not often make it into the suitcase. <laughs> so I would typically use a leftover wine bottle from the night before <laughs> just to roll it and try not to press too hard because um, then you'd have glass in your dough. But that's also an option if you two are like, whoo, where's my rolling pin? Cool, so I see a couple of thick edges. Just trying to roll it out here. But this is looking pretty good. This is, looks pretty solid. Um, I can always stretch it to the knees and patch any holes. But it is this oval oblong shape we're looking for. And so in today's recipe packet, um, if you ask the lovely people at ACC uh, for it, you'll see that the second picture includes a ring of cheese around the crust. Um, I kind of like to have cheese in my crust, but I'm also kind of lazy. So <laughs> you can do the ring around the cheese and fold it over if you want. Um, I also just kind of take a, a fourth of the cheese and then I spread it out so that it's kind of around the edges, but I already have my base. And then I'm just going to fold the cheese. I'm going to grab the cheese as I fold my crust. So. Again, a little bit different um, way of making it. So here I'm pulling it in with my index finger. I have the balance of my thumb in the back and then I'm just pushing the dough over. And then we're done with our first row. And then I'm gonna do the same for the top. So I'll go slow. So we're going over, 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 over grabbing some cheese because that's real important over 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 so then we kind of have our oval but we have two ends usually two ends and what we do is we pull the two ends and we braid them and twist them to fold and then our co combined like two at the end the ends we fold under so it does create that like nice part that you rip at the end and I'll do the same here and then we fold and twist them together to create the boat. And just like Ryan was doing, he was kind of like making it into this more rounder shape. We can do the same. Before I do that though, I'm gonna slide it onto my tray because this is already getting kind of heavy. Bloop. There we go. Easy peasy, just reformatting it a little bit. Cool, looks good. And then we're going to add the other fourth. So by now you should only have half of the cheese mixture. And we're just gonna pile it on top because that's the deliciousness of everything. <laughs> Perfect. This is your base of your hachapuri. And so we're going to let this cook for about 30 minutes in the oven, uh, 30 to 40 minutes. We're really kind of using our eyes to cook on this. We want the dough to be a light golden brown and maybe the cheese kind of Berlin or like getting a little bit round on the edge or a little bit brown on the edges. Um, yeah, so 30 to 40 minutes. It really just depends how your oven works. So we're gonna push that in. We'll check on it in a bit. I will show you how to add the uh, egg before we go today. Um, even if it's a little bit younger, I think here in the crowd, we don't have to have it necessarily all the way brown. <laughs> we have this delicious one up here that we can taste. Um, but in the meantime, I wanted to show you the one that I used to get at the cafe um, because you might be like, hey, it's really hot today. <laughs> I don't want to start my oven. Can I still do hachapuri? And the answer is yes. 
So I'm actually going to divide this into two. So same dough, you're just gonna do um, four different kind or four balls. And this one, I actually do want to keep that circular shape. So woo, I'm just gonna go around. I almost feel like it's a dumpling class. I need more flour over here. So just shift it, spread it out, shift it, spread it out. Ooh. Shift it, spread it out. So for this one, it doesn't have to be a large circle um, because essentially we're going to create a pocket of cheese, which that sounds amazing. And so really we kind of want the thinness to be here in the center, but at the top, we're going to roll it out anyways once it's a dumpling shape. So it doesn't really quite matter. And we can always twist the top off at the top if we think it's too much dough. So again, we're gonna take a fourth of the cheese and we're just gonna put it in the center here. And so when I was in the village, this was the one that they would make every day. And there was a saying that you had to learn, even with kinkali, cause that's also dumpling, you had to learn how to do 16 plates or 16 folds in your dumpling to get married. <laughs> <laughs> I could say I was not eligible enough to get married for many moons. <laughs> but here we're just gonna press it down. So I did tear off the top because it was just extra dough. I'm gonna sprinkle a little flour on it, flip it over, and we're just gently gonna roll out. So this is also like checking for air bubbles. You don't want an explosion <laughs> uh, most of the time. So I'm seeing one here. I'm just gonna slightly tear it out and patch it with dough. Ooh, yeah, lots of air bubbles. Um, and so what I did, is essentially flatten it out. We have our cheese in the center and I heated up a skillet over to the side. So I'm gonna pull that over and we're gonna put a pat of butter in it, in our skillet. So let's see. Bloop. And luckily I have my pat of butter waiting for me who doesn't have a pat of butter just sitting around. And here, I'm just gonna coat the pan with the butter. And it's already melting, which is a great sign for us. And so it kind of looks, if you've ever been to Taco Bell, I don't know how many of you guys have. Um, it's one of my favorite places. <laughs> I'll eat at fancy restaurants and not so fancy restaurants. But it kind of looks like a Crunchwrap Supreme. And that was kind of the joke in Georgia um, amongst like the Georgians uh, is that it's like a Crunchwrap Supreme. So here we're just placing it in our skillet and we're just going to let it cook kind of like a grilled cheese. So with this grilled cheese, you don't have to worry about any cheeses falling on the side. It's just gonna get nice and crispy on the bottom and brown. <laughs> so let's see, we've got it nice and going. Excellent. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make the second one here so we can go through the steps one more time because I know that was kind of quick. But for you all who have may have done this before, um, as such as like making a dumpling, it could be easy for you. So here we go. We're just going to roll it out and turn the dough each time. The so roll out and turn. And so in Georgia, there's several different kinds of these stuffed breads like this type of hachapuri. Um, to be honest, Georgia is a lot of um, vegetables and kind of meat heavy. And so my vegetarian friends had some difficulty getting like really hearty dishes. And so they would go for this hachapuri, uh, the imaruli hachapuri, which is what this one is called, and something called lobiani, which is exactly this, 
but instead of cheese, you make a bean and onion mash to stick in the center. There was also one that you can fill with, fill with potato and a boiled egg. So here we go, we got our dumpling shape or circular shape. So now I'm just gonna stretch it a bit and then we can place our cheese in the center. We'll just use it all. Bloop. Perfect. I'm gonna wash my hands one more time. Excellent. And then it seems like I hear some bubbles underneath. Oh man, I wish we had a camera over here. It's not quite ready, it's getting there. And we can see that there's some holes or some bubbles already forming. What I'm doing with the fork is I'm just kind of poking and then repatching. Again, we're trying to avoid an explosion in the kitchen. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's see how many folds. One, two, three, uh-oh, four, five, six. God, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be married today, guys. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, uh-oh, 10, 11, 12, oh no. <laughs> uh, not today, but that's okay. <laughs> so I'll put my top over here, grab some more flour, and again, press in and flatten out. And then we'll just gently roll it out. Ooh, and we have a bubble. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna poke it with the fork just to let the air out. Excellent, excellent. And then just roll it over so that we don't have cheesy messiness in our skillet. Cool, so let's take a look at this guy. Oh, oh my gosh, guys, he looks so good. Uh, I'm gonna try to flip it with this fork and we'll see how it goes. Yeah. He looks amazing. <laughs> she, he, she, it, they, all things. They, they look amazing. <laughs> so again, we'll just kind of make sure that it's all, the bottom is all covered in butter. That's essential to get that brownness. And then we have this one sitting in the wings when it's ready to be done or when this guy is done. So I'm going to start prepping for the egg. There's not much to prep. Uh, again, I kind of err on like cooking by nose, by sight, by sound, like my senses. Um, and so I'm also like trying at my house, I don't have many opportunities to use like leftover ingredients like Ryan would in the kitchen, he could use those egg whites for a sponge cake if he wanted to make a sponge cake because you can peek those whites and add it into that dish or an egg white omelet since he, his food is mostly brunch. For me, I'm kind of like, I'm just gonna use the whole egg <laughs> because I'm not cooking sponge every day um, or brunch. And that's actually how they do it in Georgia as well. It does take some watching. It's not like a boiled pot or a pot of water where don't watch it if it doesn't boil um, or don't watch it because it won't boil what we're actually doing is making sure that it's still a little jiggly we want the white to be just a little jiggly and we want the yolk to be super jiggly but that is about five to ten minutes um, before it's actually done so i'm going to take one more look at this guy and then we'll take a look in our bread yeah, this, okay, he's like, needs a plate. So I'm gonna add him to our cutting board over here, and then we'll add the other guy in there as well. Bloop. And then we'll add the other one in here. Just spinning him around to get all the buttery goodness. And let's take a look at the one in the oven. Yeah, cool. Mmm, so 
So it's still a little young, not all the way there. But I'll show you in theory what we would do since we're a few minutes out. What we would do is grab a spoon, just like Ryan was saying where he creates a, a well or a divot, you would make a divot in the center, just like this. Yep, I will try. Bloop, bloop, bloop. So right here, because you, you might feel like, hey, I wanna add a small one, it's just an egg. And you'd be correct if you were just doing the yolk. But if you're doing the white, you also wanna create it one big enough so that it includes all of the white. And then you would go ahead, well, I'll go ahead, why not? <laughs> you would go ahead and crack it in. At this point, my crest would be a little bit darker and I don't like the look of the flower. I like it to look super golden brown. So instead of doing like an egg wash, I just take my stick of butter and I run it over the edges. <laughs> it makes it look pretty. I do it at this point. So here we are, we're just like running it over the edges. Even now it's becoming more beautiful, I think. <laughs> it's becoming this golden color instead of this flabby whiteness. And then I also do it at the end. So we're gonna watch this. We're gonna watch the white. Since we're cooking it at 400, it should take about five minutes. It's always good to have the kitchen or the oven light on so that you can peer into the window. I also have a tendency to jiggle it just to see where the jiggle factor is. This guy is super done. Ooh, super done already. Whoa. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and cut into this one. And so some of our people in the audience can taste it. Yay! <laughs> A lot of excitement here. Oh, man. So the way this is usually served is it's cut in fours. And normally, too, we would go ahead and sprinkle some more butter on top, just so we get that golden brown. I know, <laughs> just so we get some more golden brown. I'm gonna turn this guy off, because he is definitely done. Yeah, he'll look nice if we flip him over this way. And I'll also cover him in butter while we wait to cut the rest of his friends. Bloop. And then we'll go ahead and we'll cut this into fours. So it's served in fours stacked on top of each other. So we would tear and we got this gooey goodness. Perfect. I'm going to add them on top of each other right here. And this is the Imaruli Hachapuri. Oh man, cheese strings for days, y'all. Looks great. All right, I'm gonna pass this up front. I'm gonna steal one for myself. <laughs> but here you guys go. <laughs> mm. Man, this is, I mean, this feta cheese, mm. if you let the brine turn yellow, I know it sounds weird. <laughs> this is exactly the taste of the cheese that you get in Georgia. Mm. 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 Awesome. I'm going to cut this other one because we have more than just me and the folks see seated up front. We'll go ahead, cut this guy up too. We'll stack him. And it's still a little doughy. I apologize, guys. But... Yeah, cheese strings. Here you guys go. Perfect. All right, let's take a look at the guy downstairs. He's not quite done. Um, I'm gonna bring him up top so you guys can see. He's only been in there for about two minutes. 
Definitely way too jiggly. Way, way too jiggly. His white is still very uncooked, but here we can see the white is starting to cook here. And so we're gonna look for a much more cooked white like we have here. And oh, I'm gonna shut this oven so I don't walk into it. But normally we'd add another, guess what, pat of butter. <laughs> and what we would do is we'd serve it this way, bloop, right here. Our yolk would be jiggly. And what we do, oh man, he's a little cold, but we mix it all together like what you saw in the video with Ryan. So always remember the pat of butter because it helps create the sauce and the custard that, this cheesy custard that's almost created um, by melting the egg, the cheese, and the butter. <sighs> so I hope you all enjoy the hachapuri, whether you make the uh, ajaruli or the imareti or imaruli hachapuri. And I hope you enjoy all the wonderful cheesy goodness that we experienced today. Thank you.